What's happening to Hoodat Nation? Welcome into today's video. Before we get started, guys, I just want to give you guys a quick second. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at TraceGerard48, trying to build up my social media. So if you guys want to get some coverage outside of these videos, in between each video, every single day, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. Links in the comment section and in the description. And guys, we have a like battle. Those scumbag Broncos tried to take our former head coach. They tried to go and take a bunch of our players, tried to take our kicker, tight ends, everything, and it ain't working. But they are beating us in a like battle, so I need you to help me out. Hit that thumbs up icon and like today's video. And without further ado, let's talk some football. Because Lyle Collins, he has been released by the Cincinnati Bengals off of their pup list. So I want to start off today's show by asking the question, should the Saints sign him? Because when you look at the depth chart, Penning, Ramchek, Landon Young, those are your tackles that you can run with. So Ramchek, we know what he is. He's a stud. He's going to be great every single time you have him on the field. you love to see it. Trevor Penning, he's still a project, needs some more work. He was, he was bad in the first half. Second half of week one, he was a little bit better. But Landon Young is the backup tackle there. And in terms of just... in. Uh, PF, uh, PFF production, excuse me, entirely against the Tennessee Titans. Very talented defensive line. Uh, I just want to add that. It's not a bad unit. Like, this was a good litmus test for this unit. And when you have Trevor Penning putting up a PFF grade of 54, James Hurst, 68.7, Eric McCoy, 66.8, Cesar Ruiz, 32.2, Ryan Ramchek, he had a 74.8. I mean, it's pretty solid all around. I think that Cesar Ruiz, though, quite honestly, he just did terrible. Like, you just got paid, and that's the production you're going to put up? Come on. That's ridiculous. But anyway, I still think that offensive line is a big weakness for this team. So Lyle Collins could be a guy that can help with that squad. And in terms of the production in 2022, the nerds over at PFF, it logs them for 951 snaps, an overall grade of 57.9, 44.2 in the pass block, 70. 3.5 in the run blocking grade. So similar to Trevor Penning, Collins, great run blocker. Not a great pass blocker. Let up five sacks last season. And one thing that I like about Collins is the versatility that he has. He can play not just in the tackle spot, but he can also play in, at the guard spot. In his first couple of years with Dallas, he did play guard. And then with Cincinnati, and then you know the last couple of years with Dallas, he did play tackle. So you can see the versatility. You can get a lot of usage out of him. I mean, at six foot four, three hundred and fifteen pounds, the Baton Rouge native, I think he could be a pretty interesting guy to have on the roster. But it is worth noting he is recovering from a torn ACL that he suffered back in December. So do you want to run the risk of that injury, maybe potentially flaring up? My entire thought, I will get to that in just a second, but I want to ask you. Should the Saints sign Lyle Collins? Type Y for yes, type N for no. You might get hit with the YouTube ad break here. So if that happens, don't click out of the video. Just take a few seconds, scroll down, share your thoughts. And by the time you're done commenting, the video will be playing once again. So in my thoughts, I'm going to say no. I I'm just going to say it. Because in my personal opinion, you have to develop Trevor Penning. And if you put him on the bench, if you don't give him reps and you give him time, it's not going to matter. The dude hasn't even started three games yet. He get it. I get it. He was a first-round pick. He had the injury problems. But you got to give him a chance. You know, you can't just throw in the towel and say, ah, he, bad, he was bad one week, or ah, he was a project, ah, whatever. No, you got to give him the chance to at least prove he can develop and prove that he can get better. Because I think that he has gotten better every time he's gone out on the field. So give him a fair shot. So now let's get into the latest news around the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers ahead of the Week 2 matchup on Monday Night Football, which, by the way, we're going to be live. It's going to be me and my boy Jake Chipper. It's going to be a party, so don't miss out on that. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. But Nick Underhill reporting this. The Saints are signing defensive line Kyle Phil or D-lineman Kyle Phillips to the 53-man roster per source. He was with the practice squad. He showed some good things in the preseason this year. So I'm pretty excited to see what Phillips can do. And, you know, in terms of another defensive line depth, Peyton Turner, he has that. He's going to have to have that surgery. So with that in, you know, in the near future, the Saints went ahead and addressed that need so they could have some more depth. I found it interesting that Isaiah Foskey wasn't even suited up this past week for the Saints. 
Uh, but if they don't have faith in him, if they want to roll with Terrell uh, Lewis instead, former Bears practice squad member, that might be an interesting option. And in terms of uh, Terrell Lewis, he's a good pass rusher. He had three sacks in the preseason. Not much of a run stopper. So, you know, kind of he's going to go and get get you sacks and stuff. He's going to get pressure on the quarterback. And he did have a really good preseason with Chicago. So, who knows? Maybe he can make an impact. I'd love to see him make a positive impact on the team. And I'd like to see him be utilized in the rotation because I have a firm believer that the Saints defensive coaches – get the most out of their players. All right, so in terms of some injury news around the Carolina Panthers, their top cornerback, J.C. Horn, will, will be sidelined for, quote, multiple weeks because of a hamstring issue. And in terms of just some injury reports, the official report won't actually come out today because it's Monday Night Football. The full report will come out tomorrow, but this is just what we know so far. J.C. Horn, like we just said, the cornerback, will miss a few weeks with the uh, groin injury. DJ Chark, he said that he will not be – or he did not play, excuse me, in week one versus Atlanta because of a hamstring issue. And I do want to note – I do want to add this note that Chark, he's very injury prone, so if he isn't available for the Panthers this week, I wouldn't be too surprised. And then, as we know, the Panthers are taking on the Saints at home in Monday night football. So the Saints are traveling to Carolina. Hopefully they can come out with a win. And I do think that this is a huge loss for the Panthers because, I mean, who else is on their defense? We're going to show the depth chart here in just a second. We're going to talk about the matchups that I'm really excited to watch. Um, but it's a big loss for the Panthers. They don't have a great defense. They don't have a lot of DB depth. Outside of Brian Burns, it's kind of quiet on that defense. So coming up, I'm going to get into why I think the Saints offense could go crazy in week two. But before we get to that, if you want to make some money on week two, let me tell you something. I'm getting rich this week because the Panthers are going to be terrible. Their defense is going to be bad. J.C. Horn, he's not playing. They're not going to be able to stop anything. And I'm taking advantage of the 125% deposit bonus that BetUS has thrown up by using Chat125 when you go to the link chatsports.com slash bet. I mean, look at these odds. Are you kidding me? The, the, uh, who's going to stop this Saints offense? What defenders are going to be playing? Saints minus three? Beat the books, hammer that line, and go get rich with me. 41 over and under, I'm smashing the over. I think the Saints are just going to have an absolute field day against the Panthers. Go get started at betuschatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125. All right, so let's look at that depth chart like I just said. Who the hell is going to guard Chris Olave? Who in the hell is going to guard Mar uh, Michael Thomas? Who's going to stop Jamal Williams? Who's going to try and guard Juwan Johnson? I mean, it's not going to be these three guys. J.C. Horn's not even playing. So Deshaun Jameson? No. Dante Jackson? Doubtful. Jeremy Chin? I mean, come on. No. So Chris Olave, let me just tell you something, kid. You better eat your Wheaties on Sunday. You better make sure that you're ready to go because you have the opportunity to have a freaking day. And for all my fantasy football guys out there, I'm just going to you know, give you a piece of advice. Take my word for it. Start Chris Olave, start Rashid Shahid, start Jawan Johnson. If you have pass catchers on your roster in fantasy, I would start them this week. Like they, it, You saw the depth chart. It's bad. Chris Olave, he needs to have a big day, and I think he could. And that's not just for Olave. It's the pass catchers in general. They need to show up hungry. They have the opportunity this week, the Saints offense, to prove that they are a quality unit. You know, despite whether or not you like Derek Carr, despite whether or not you think that they have good weapons, they have a good offensive line, the Panthers' defense is bad. The Saints' offense does have playmakers. So your pass catchers need to show up hungry. Derek Carr, come focused, come ready to go. We all know that that's going to be the case, but they, this team has the opportunity to really make something happen in Week 2 against a divisional rival nonetheless. And on the opposite side of the ball for the Panthers, who the hell is going to catch the ball for Bryce Young? I mean, DJ Chark, he didn't play week one. Maybe he plays week two. Jonathan Mingo, he's a rookie. I mean, Adam Thielen, washed. LaVisca Chenault, doubt it. I mean, come on. Like, th this wide receiver group is not good. And not to mention, the running backs, Miles Sanders, who, yeah, he was, he's solid. Chuba Hubbard, like, I mean, are you kidding me? Look, the flight crew is going to take care of some stuff for us. Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson Adebo, and Elante Taylor. Those are your three starting uh, cornerbacks with Marshawn and Paulson Adiba on the outside, Alante in that slot nickel spot. 
Each of them almost had an interception. Elante Taylor almost came down in an interception. And if you see the picture that's on the graphic, that's the play it almost came down to. It was awesome. Paulson Adebo, two tackles, a pass breakup, and an interception. Marshawn Ladmore, he got picked crazy. He got an interception early, a four pass breakups and two tackles. Taylor had a day, five tackles and a pass breakup. And I really want to see Taylor continue to grow in that nickel role. Um, the flight crew, hope you guys, you know, got, I hope you guys are ready to go. I'm just going to leave it at that. Hope you guys are ready to have a good day. So let me know, Saints fans, who you got. Type S for Saints, type P for Panthers. I'm spamming my S for Saints down in the comment section. And as for me, for my final takes, just final thoughts, let me know in the comment section, S for Saints, P for Panthers. But I think that the Saints should have no problem with Carolina. I really think that this is a team that should go and, quite honestly, beat the brakes off of the Panthers. It's an away game. It's prime time. Under the lights, spotlight is on you. But you shouldn't have a problem here. I will say this, though. Do not ever overlook a divisional opponent. The Panthers, for some reason, always play you tough. Right now, they're on a two-game win streak over in the entire uh, you know, matchup, between the history between the two. The Panthers do lead. the, or They are 28-29 um, against the Saints all time. So, you know, I, this is just an interesting battle for both of these teams to go into. I want the Saints to come out of the top. I truly do believe they can. And, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time.